Welcome to Interval Drinks with your tipsy thespian pals, Chris and SLP. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, no, so, so, hello. Is that us? We're on. We I just love it. Yes. <laughs> We're rocking and rolling. Hello. Is that our signal to start? I talking. think so. Sure. I've just We're got to start now. with a bit of an apology, SLP. Oh no. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm drinking, but yes. I'm I'm going to be struggling with this one because I have just come back from Leeds Festival. Hey! <laughs> well, cheers to that. I'm with a little my, bit hanging, what but have you got vodka, you know, I've got G&T. Yeah, I've got a, a vodka tonic here. Mm. This is. Uh, mm. I'm going down really well. <laughs> uh, Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome be, back. Welcome back. And we're going to be talking about the bonkers and brilliant uh, musical adaptation of the Hans Christian Andersen story, The Ugly Duckling. Yep. It stars and Drews. Oh, oh, oh. I was waiting for that. And of course, we've got the appropriate themed cocktail. Oh, we do. We what do. What are we calling this one, SLP? We've got the oh. wild grey goose chase. See what we more, did there. More vodka. See what more we vodka, did there. Thank you, Barman. I can just uh, let's cheers to this. I want to just have a little. Uh... Oh, oh no, Ooh, that's, that's nice. That is nice. That is really nice. Actually, oh, it's a bit strong over the is. first one. Oh. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, courtesy, of course, the uh, Vox Box on Newland Avenue holds yep. premier karaoke bar. 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 <laughs> Well, uh, oh no, I see where this is no, going. No, no, we can say it's like an Animal <laughs> Farm, the musical. So the original story then, written in 1843. Yeah, is this the, uh, it's Hans Christian Andersen. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wrote a lot of quite dark stuff, didn't he? Like, yes. it's not, it's, it's often um, edited, I don't know if that's the right word, but like portrayed to be quite a sweet sort of thing. But yeah, with actually, a moral, like a fable. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. It's like the um, the Aesop's fables, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, some of those are quite sinister too. They are. Aren't they? Yes, but it's yes. all a bit, um, I can't think of the word, prejudiced. Yes. This one, isn't it? Laced with prejudice. But then we can look at them as more uh, sort of morality tales, yeah, I guess. Fair. Okay. Um, uh, it's essentially a strong message of, of tolerance in there yeah. as well, isn't there? And it breaks down those uh, barriers of prejudice in a skillful and playful way. Yes. The, it feels, um, it definitely feels very child friendly, doesn't it? And even though they're quite strong um, messages, like you say, but. It's also like got that whole, oh, he's dressed as a cat. Yes. Oh, he's a duck. <laughs> yes. I think there's, there's, there's some of the, the shows we're going to be discussing in this series of, uh, of podcasts that are not mm. as child friendly no, as perhaps exactly. this one is. But so let's revel in it while we're yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Let's wallow in that pond. <laughs> Stars and Drew are an iconic musical theatre writing yeah. duo with shows like uh, Betty Blue Eyes and yep. Soho Cinders. And uh, they're also the writers of additional songs in, in uh, more classic musicals such as. Mary Poppins oh, yes. and uh, Half a Sixpence. The new Half a Sixpence, of course, yeah. yeah. Did they do um, the Just So as yes, well? Yes, they did. They? Oh, yeah, I love those. absolutely. And uh, really Wind in the nice. Willows yes. and that kind of... Oh. Which uh, I, I suppose Wind in the Willows... It's all quite humble yeah, place, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, bless the hearts, nice. yeah. So it was first produced in 1993 as a sort of workshop piece, was right. Hulk. And it eventually opened in the West End, yep. at not while 1999. Oh. But it did win the Olivia Award for Best Musical in the year 2000. Oh, gosh. And there's some real iconic tunes in Honk. There are. I really like Honk. Um, oh. I particularly love the song Warts and All. Which oh, is yes, that's kind by, of the big the toad number, or yeah. the, the frog? And, the and I think frog, if yeah. we were talking karaoke songs, that would definitely be my go-to would it? karaoke oh, song. Gosh. I actually saw a production of uh, Honk uh, by an amateur children's society. Yes. Uh, Hats Kids. Uh, they're, they're based in uh, at the Floral Hall in Hornsey. Oh, And the yes, little guy, the I can't Hall. remember, it was quite a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago now, but the little guy that played the toad who sang Warts and All was just Aww. absolutely sensitive. Sensational. Cute. It is the That's showstopper, really nice. isn't it? It is. It really is. Oh man. Um, but was yeah. it? Uh, sorry to interrupt. Was it workshopped in? Um, did I read it? it was in the watermill in Newbury? Yes. Yeah. So it no, I the just watermill. went there for oh, the first wow. time, literally on uh, when was it? It was on Thursday last week to go and see the Lord of the Rings musical. Oh wow! And I had just heard so much about this beautiful little theatre, and I didn't like really realise until wow. I got there just how it is. It's gorgeous. Tiny. I've never been to the watermill. Oh man! Uh, how was it, how was Lord of the Rings? The best bit of theatre I've ever seen in my life, ever. What? Yeah. Wow, because yeah. that only had a really short West End run, didn't it? It did, because it was so expensive. Yeah. And also, I can I can understand as well that there's um, 
a bit, you know, the uh, diehard like Lord of the Rings fans. It's like, how do you get the story that's like that to fit into to that fit into amount that. of time? And it, but it was, it's glorious, glorious. And I discovered the soundtrack a couple of years ago and I just fell in love with it. Wow. And it's very like folky now that, tunes and stuff. That it's, is yeah. like a, a, a bold claim. It was claim. so, it is a bold claim. <laughs> but like I was driving back afterwards, like the, uh, so I got back at like half three in the morning. It was all a bit silly, but I was just like sobbing all the way back. Going, <laughs> I love emotional. it so much. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it was gorgeous. Cool. <laughs> but the theater is, it's like, you sort of, um, it's got its own gardens and it's all on sort of one complex. So actually, like when I was reading about Honk and stuff, it sounded just like this would be the perfect, the perfect setting. setting. Yeah, it's all for that. lush yeah, yeah, greenery yeah, yeah, yeah. and you'd feel that all these animals were kind of at home and you can imagine a farm just over the over way. Over the way, and, oh wow. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. Really beautiful setting. I think uh, Stephen Joseph did a, a production of this as well oh, in Scarborough. Oh, yes! Um, which is, uh, I mean, some of their shows are incredible. I've just yes. come back from seeing 39 Steps there. I really was, wanted to catch that. I've really, just finished really and I'm yeah, so yeah, annoyed, yeah. but yeah. But it was, uh, it's so good and, and, and they're brilliant at producing their sort of homemade, homegrown, yes sort of um, twists on, on things. I, like I saw that. a production of the Mikado there. I know <gasps> you're a big GNS, yes, yes, GNS yes. fan and they, they set it on a, a cricket ground. Oh, and uh, the three little maids were from the uh, private school across the way <laughs> and they were hockey players <laughs> and they came along <laughs> with their jolly hockey sticks. <laughs> and did it. Yeah, happy. absolutely. But, that uh, sounds really yeah, good. Yeah, and, and a joy. So uh, do they normally do like a, um, like you say, a sort of a twist, a deliberate twist yes, on shows? Yes, I think so, yes. I think a lot of the times there are. I mean, uh, when I saw 39 Steps there, that was traditional. Traditionally staged. Yeah. Okay. Um, but in the small space, yes. they made they made the best of it. And I, I like. It was, that. I, I sometimes it was think like an um, intimate space can actually. I think a lot of people are very quick to sort of say, "Oh no, it's too small. We won't be able to do it." And it's like you can really get some good staging challenges from yeah, a small yeah, space, yeah, yeah. can't you? And, and kind of forced intimacy, can't yeah. you? And you and can a, play on that. Yeah. And, a, and from a directorial point of view, you can kind of sit back and watch and think, "Oh, what a really yeah. good choice they made there to do yeah. this." And that. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like intimate settings. I like the characters. Oh, yeah. The characters are amazing. The cat oh, being my oh, particular favorite. I everybody, loves, the cat. everybody loves everybody the baddie, loves right? The cat. But <laughs> I like how they, they're not dressed in like a cat costume, kind of thing, or like, or with feathers and stuff like that. They're all, it's the costumes are so clever that it's like, because he's, um, isn't the cat in like a sort of quite suave um, jacket oh, yeah, and bow tie and things like that? He's not like, as in, Andrew Lloyd Webber's cats yeah, where yeah, they're yeah. trying to with the bee cats yeah exactly and I just think that's a really nice it's almost like every costume gets a bit of the are you alright <laughs> it's strong isn't it I'm having Leeds Festival flashbacks <laughs> well not over my dress you're not <laughs> not over my dress you're not um, but yeah I like how the because of course he's meant to he's quite uh, seductive towards ugly and stuff isn't he he's trying to entrance him throughout and he's just I'm like, preparing to be his lunch and so he's dressed in this ever such a um, suave kind of way to sort He's of charm. Yeah, exactly, and to get that charisma to help him and stuff like that. And then um, is it Turkey and Drake and stuff have like the the flat caption? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Northern, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so incredible, isn't it? I know. It's really but clever. It's the universal message that makes this family show a utter joy from start yeah. to finish. Mm -hmm. And I think Stars and Drew have worked wonders on that. I was toying with the idea of playing a bit of a honk game, oh. but for our listeners, viewers, uh, whatever, I thought maybe that was going to be a little bit, because um, it's not the most well-known musical. No, it's not. So what I, I decided to do is come up with five questions right. for you and, for and our listeners. <laughs> and oh. the five questions are going to be from generic children's or family musical theatre shows. Okay. And I've called this game Honk if you know the answer. Rather tenuous, but <laughs> I, I just wanted to hear your honk again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm You're gonna not ask the you a first question one, Chris. from a family show. I'm just gonna hit you with all five, and if you know right. the answer to one of them, you a just honk. give me a honk. All right, okay. does it do they have to be the same honk each time, or do you want me you to can, mix it up? You can mix up your honks. I said that, and I don't really know your how I'm gonna tonks. do that. Well, you, there, there we are now, you've, uh, you've said it, you have to do it, because they're on the edge of the seats. Shit. What's coming Shit. out of a mouth next? <laughs> No. Which double digit number is also the title of a Jason Robert Brown musical? Oh, oh. 13. 13. Got well it. Done. Oh, I feel right. I've set the precedent. You now. see where this is going. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, really question number great. two. Oh, nice and easy. You'll like this one. Okay. All right. Hush by Mountain oh. is a sweet lullaby yes. from which musical? Honk. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's on the pit to the stomach, isn't it? Chitty chitty bag man. Chitty chitty bag man. <laughs> Who plays that. Miss Trunchbull in the 2022 movie musical version of Matilda? Um, Hog. Uh, hunk. There you go. Um, Emma Thompson. Very good, very good. And I didn't mind her. I loved it. I, I liked it. the film. And yeah. I, I actually didn't mind Emma Thompson in that at all. I we haven't covered pregnant. Matilda yet, have we? We, we need to do Let's Matilda add it to definitely. The list. But I went back and uh, watched it, and uh, yeah, I just I think she's great. There was loads of like arguments about her getting it, wasn't there? Yeah, about there was. The uh, fact that she's a woman. I think so. Ralph Fe- Fiennes, 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 Voldemort. Uh, I think he uh, was he in the was picked to do it, and then. Uh, they changed it at the last minute. I, I think she did. Quite oh, wide, but I thought she was great. Yep. We'll cover that Brimstone when we get to the and Treacle is an additional song written by Styles and Drew for which musical? Brimstone and Treacle. I don't... Oh, oh I've, I've got a guess. I don't know if it's right. Honk! <laughs> wow. <laughs> That album. Yeah. Um, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Oh, right. I think yeah. Mary Poppins. <laughs> well done. And finish the lyric. This is the yeah. last one you'll be pleased to know. Finish oh, right, the song okay. lyric. Bobbing along, bobbing along on the bottom of the hunk, beautiful bride you see. Well done. <laughs> and well done if you've got five Yay! out of five for that at home. Amazing. That was really nice. I like that. Lovely little game, wasn't I it? I like that. Thank you very much. Um, I've got, uh, where have I put it? I'll put it. Oh, here it is. That's right. It was right at the, right at the uh, bottom of my sheet of paper. Um, because I said about the morals of this show, um, and I think it works really well for children. Do you think that there are other sort of fairy tales that could be similarly turned ah, into well, this kind of thing? Now, of course, so if sticking with Hans Christian Andersen, he obviously has done The Snow Queen, which is Frozen. Uh huh. And the Little Mermaid, mermaid which, which is, is the Little, little Mermaid. mermaid. Um, but he's got some really like rather dark ones in. Do you know? Do you know the Red Shoes at all? Red Shoes. Yeah, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a freaky one, which isn't really commercialised that. M- I mean, there are a couple of films of it, but that's really dark. It's like a girl. Oh, I can't remember it fully, but a girl has a pair of shoes and she gets somehow cursed. With them, or they are cursed, or something. So she can't take them off, and she has to dance until oh, she dies. Oh yes, there's a ballet, the Red Shoes yes, Ballet. Yeah. I'm sure I came across that from, uh, I think Northern Ballet did a, a yes. thing of that that I saw um, many moons ago. Red Shoes, of course. And there's yeah, yeah. a there's a, a couple of films about it and stuff. But it's kind of, I don't know. I love, I lo- you know me. I love a story when it's a bit dark and uh, gritty and things. But also, I don't know where can you find that balance because ho- I think Honk does it rather nicely as we've said there's all the sort of intolerance like throughout and but ultimately they do sort of change at the end it's like oh you're a swan now we like you you're great yeah. but he... it's kind of like the grease message, it is, isn't, isn't it, it? oh yeah. no oh is this grease for kids yeah if you change oh, you God. can be uh <laughs> you can oh, we like you now. Yeah, 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 yeah. but um what, what's the mother called in this what's um ida, mother? ida. Yeah. she sticks by ugly no matter what yeah, I mean, it's even does. called ugly i mean come on but like she really she braves like the blizzard for him doesn't she and she sort of she leaves her other i can't remember how many four or five ducklings behind in order yeah. to do that yeah as and only she, a mother would exactly every tear a mother cries um but that's so she's literally like the one who will stick with him, bar the cat who's just greedy. Oh, he's luring him <laughs> he's into a like, false sense eat of you. security. The songs are brilliant, they aren't they? Are I know good. we mentioned Warts and All, but just going on uh, about that brilliant scene setter, the opening song. Yes. In these backwaters of England, oh. where the pace of life is slow. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's really nice, actually. I saw it the um, uh, first time, I think it was a couple of years ago, with uh, an amateur company, and they had loads of uh, children in the, um, in the chorus as well. I think they kind of, um, what's the word, when you add more people, it like foddered out the yeah. uh, chorus and stuff like that, but with loads of children, and it was really nice. It worked really, really well. Um, so the ducklings ended up being about a group of like 20, rather than like four. It's a nice one to stage for amateur groups, I yes. think. But will it sell? Is it a seller? Um, it's not as commercial or as well known as say, no. some of the other musicals that, that amateur groups are, are doing at the moment. I suppose not, unless you really 
market it as a family show though or then... like hats the uh the the group from from Hansi who have yes. built up a great name for themselves yeah people will go and see something there at, at Hansi Flora Hall because that building serves the community yes so, yeah yeah I went to Flora Hall for the first time uh, a couple of months ago to go and see an adult pantomime and it was amazing I really <laughs> really liked it are you going to tell us a bit more about this adult pantomime <laughs> well, or <laughs> I don't know how much we can censor, um, but I just, I, I really love, like, I've, I've recently grown to sort of love pantomime anyway. I love pantomime. And then just that with all the subtleties completely taken out of it, and it's just So if they did an adult twist up. on this, they would probably call this bonk? Oh, yeah! Hey! <laughs> See what I there. like that. Oh dear. Oh, amazing, amazing. It is but good. What a show to start this new series off. I know. It's nice. If you were um, one of these uh like farmyard animals i suppose are all of them can we count as farmyard yeah yeah, yeah sure they're, they're farming which one do you think you'd be drawn mm. towards do you know what i like being an outsider i oh. wouldn't mind being ugly oh and then you get your redemption at the end no i'd say sorry oh. i don't want to be a swan i want to stick oh <laughs> as the frog says the toad says out there someone's gotta love you warts and all. all oh I like that. Me too. I like that. But I don't know where the moral lies. There's no moral. There's no... <laughs> You'll just find me at the side of a curb. <laughs> like I was this <laughs> weekend. I'd lost a few feathers, ruffled a few feathers, and honked all over my... Oh, stop. <laughs> right, OK. No, no. Stop, 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 stop. Um, I've got another suggestion, though, of a, uh, of a fairy tale, which I'd be quite intrigued to see how it would work. Are you familiar with the Emperor's New Clothes? Oh, wow, yes. How? How? Because I would like that to happen. That would be great. But I don't know how. Like how it would work. Yeah. And there's... Just uh, have someone new is it Disney stage? who did the Emperor's New Groove? I don't know if you saw that cartoon. Yes, that the was, Disney. I, I love that I film. saw that once. I, 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 I must revisit that because oh, I remember really enjoying it. It was gem. great fun. That's a really good it's one. It's Disney, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. pretty it's sure a, it was a Disney uh, It's Disney a hidden one. gem, But Emperor's New Clothes would be a good one. It would. And I just want to have an excuse to have someone full on naked on stage. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? <laughs> that children's theatre at its best. Yeah! <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. I was thinking <laughs> down the child's room. Oh, no. Oh, bless oh, you. Crikey. Um, da, 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 da. What's the other one that I had? Oh, that the, the only other one I had was Little Match Girl. Oh, you know gosh, one, yeah, yeah, the Little Match Girl. Where yeah. she, uh, does she set fire to? Now. What happens there? Well. I've got it from this like old storybook that I used to read, so I hope it's not like too. She used different to collect the things thing. in the wood, didn't she? She used to collect bits yeah, of and kindling and and it's like Christmas night, I think, and she's trying desperately to keep warm. She's got these matches to sell, uh, and she strikes a match, and she sort of then can see through a window, and she sort of sees like a, a Christmas turkey being prepared and stuff like that, and then she strikes it again. There's um, and she sees like presents around the tree and stuff like that and, and one more and it's like a lovely family um all gathering on Christmas Eve kind of thing but then, I know it is well, I know but then like that you wake up the next morning and she's like she was just trying to keep herself warm and she's dead on the, on oh, the floor oh no I know so oh, again no. I know. <laughs> sorry <laughs> I, say, I think that's the version that poor little like, match girl poor little match girl but it just seems like that would be a really like be, I wonder actually that could be a really nice ballet that could be a big that could be a big musical it could be a big musical. <laughs> Matches! <laughs> Let's get writing it. <laughs> I'd love that. But, um, oh, I know, again, this isn't really on honk, but uh, on ballet, I've just been to see my first Matthew Bourne. Oh, Romeo and Juliet? Uh, it was Romeo. Oh, did you love it? I did love it. It was, it, the plot really sort of confused me a little bit because he has moved it quite far away from where I was expecting it to, to be, be, should, should yeah, we say. Yeah, but yeah. essentially the same, um, morals is the wrong word, themes are still yeah. there and I just thought the dance was beautiful amazing right really really gorgeous amazing. I saw Matthew Bourne's Cinderella which they'd set in 1940s Blitz oh wow uh, which was just incredible yeah so mind blowing yeah oh, and Swan gosh. Lake of course is uh does he normally do like sort of fairy tales then? Yeah, he always he, he likes to use uh, the music of Tchaikovsky for his yeah. uh, scores. Yeah. But he reworks things. And the thing I like about Matthew Bourne, which is absolutely nothing to do with Hong, by the way, <laughs> but you know we like well, to go off on a little tangent yeah, now and then. He uh, he allows his dancers uh, to um, assist him in the work, in the creation. Yeah. 
So he will really? give them the idea and say, look, this is my idea, this is how I want it to look. Wow. And it's the dancers that actually choreograph it from his vision, from his no ideas. No way! Yeah. yeah. That's right, I'm just going to do the work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, mad props to him, he's made a, really a good cool. living, hasn't he? Well, so my question, which you might be able to guess that's coming up from this, would he do the Ugly Duckling? Can ah. he do Honk? Ooh. Now, Northern <laughs> Ballet have done the Ugly Duckling. Have they? They have, as a ballet. Oh, cool. And uh, I took uh, my class to see that a couple of years oh, ago. And, how was uh, it? Yeah, and the following year they did The Three Little Pigs, which of course is also quite a dark, sinister it little is. story if you, if you unpick dark, it. They're all quite dark, They are, aren't they? Because even like, and the Cinderella, I know that people might know there's some more from Into the Woods because they use that, but the sisters like chop off the a toes bit of the and toes then they, and the heel and stuff like that. So it's, there's always like these rather dark bits. And then don't they... Um, someone gets their eyes pecked out. Yes, can't remember Black when Bird. or who, yeah, yeah, but yeah. someone does. And, and then like... these fairy tales are given to Roald Dahl, and he makes them even darker. Oh yeah, <laughs> God, he is dark as well. I love it though. I love it. I love it. I kind of love it. I love but it. Honk, beautiful little show, beautiful little, beautiful show. little hidden gem. If you've not listened to the soundtrack or or seen a production of it, try and go and see it if you can. Yeah, and let us know what you think. Yeah, three, two, one. Honk. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.